So in our last video, we set up the problem section for this investigation. Now we're moving on to the plan where we need to make some definitions and talk about where our data came from. So as a reminder, I've included the table of information that we had to start off with in the last video, and we are selecting carrot and price from that um, table of data. Just move it up here out of the way so we can write about it. So first we need to define the data source. Now we can see in that information that we've been given that um, the data came from 236 uh, round diamond stones that was collected from a Singapore-based retailer. So we can pop that into our plan and say that um, this data came from that data source that we've just talked about. Next is to identify what the explanatory and response variables are, and it's very important you get these the right way around. So the explanatory is the one that you think might explain the relationship that you can see and might possibly be the cause of the response, but be very careful, don't actually use the word cause, because that would mean investigating something called causality. We'll come to that in the later videos of the analysis. And then the response variable is the one that you think is responding to the other one. So in our situation, we need to think about whether we think that it's the carrot or the price um, that is the explanatory or response. So um, if, if we're thinking about carrot and price, which one do we think explains the other one? And which one do we think responds to the other one? So for this way around, we would expect the carrot to be the explanatory one and the price responds to the weight. It wouldn't really make sense to put it the other way around to say that the price would explain um, uh, how big a diamond is and that the diamond size would respond to the price that we put on it. It would make much more sense to say it the other way around. So now we can define our explanatory and response variables properly. Now we've worked out which way around they should go. And note that when I do this definition, I'm going to use all of the information that we have given to us in our. Um, data set. So I'm just going to copy that. So here are our definitions um, and fully written out with all of the details from what we were given plus the units that they get measured in. Okay, the next variable is going to take, uh, sorry, the next video is going to take us through how to make the graph of this um, using NZGrapher.